Once again, for rigid body undergoing general plane motion, for any two points A and B that belong to this rigid body, we can write this equation that relates their linear velocities. According to this equation, if at this instant VA is zero, then this equation becomes simply VB equals to the cross product of omega, which is the angular velocity, vector of this rigid body and r b slash a which is the relative position vector with respect to point a also according to cross product rules we can determine that the direction of the velocity of point b is perpendicular to its relative position vector and for any other point on this rigid body point c or d we can write similar equations and draw similar conclusions it is as if this rigid body is rotating about a fixed axis that passes through point A. In this case, point A is known as the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Pay attention to the word instantaneous, which indicates that point A only has a zero velocity at this instant, and at this instant alone can it be considered as the center of rotation. If we can identify the instantaneous center of zero velocity for a rigid body at a given instant, then the general plane motion reduces to pure rotation, which is a lot easier in terms of calculation. Sometimes the instantaneous center of zero velocity can be determined simply through observation. For example, in this problem, if the wheel is rolling without slipping, and it has the given angular velocity omega and angular acceleration alpha, we need to determine the linear velocity and linear acceleration of its center point G. Since this wheel is rolling without slipping, therefore, where it is in contact with the ground, it should have the same velocity of the ground, which is zero. Therefore, this contacting point is our instantaneous center of zero velocity. Therefore, the general plane motion of this wheel can now be reduced to a pure rotation about this point IC. Therefore, the linear velocity of point G equals to the cross product of omega and R, the relative position of G with respect to IC, which is the position vector drawn from IC to G. And according to our coordinate system, this position vector is RI. And omega has a component of k, therefore vg equals to negative r omega i, indicating that the direction of motion is horizontal towards the negative x direction. And since the linear acceleration equals to the time derivative of the linear velocity, dvg over dt, and from observation, we can see that the direction of motion is always horizontal and the radius of the wheel r is a constant therefore the only variable is omega the magnitude of the angular velocity therefore from here a g equals to negative r d omega dt i and d omega dt is simply alpha But how do you find the instantaneous center of zero velocity when it is not so obvious? Well, there are two conditions that must be satisfied simultaneously. The first one is the linear velocity vector of any point in this rigid body must be perpendicular to the relative position vector from the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Secondly, the velocity magnitude is proportional to the relative distance, again, from the instantaneous center of zero velocity. In general, there are three cases. First case, if you know the direction of the linear velocities of any two points in this rigid body, and they are not parallel to each other, then if you draw the two lines that are perpendicular to these two velocity vectors respectively, the point of interception must be the instantaneous center of zero velocity, because this is the only way that the first condition can be satisfied. Second case, 
if you know the direction of the velocities of two points in this rigid body, but the two velocity vectors are parallel to each other, then you know for sure that if you draw the line that is perpendicular to both of these two position vectors, then the instantaneous center of zero velocity must be on this line, because that's the only way the first condition can be satisfied. But if at the same time you also know the magnitudes of these two velocities, then you can determine the location of instantaneous center of zero velocity through similar triangles. As you can tell, the instantaneous center of zero velocity does not have to be in this rigid body. It can be beyond this rigid body. The third case is similar. Again, these two velocity vectors are parallel to each other and the instantaneous center of zero velocity must be on this line that is perpendicular to both of them. And if at the same time you also know the magnitudes of these two velocities, then you can determine the exact location of the instantaneous center through similar triangles. And in either case, the ratio between the velocity magnitude and the relative distance from the instantaneous center is omega, the angular velocity magnitude of this rigid body. Let's revisit this problem that we looked at in the previous video, and let's try to solve the angular velocity of rod BC using the instantaneous center of zero velocity. We can use this approach because we can easily determine the directions of linear velocities of point B and point C that both belong to this rigid body rod BC. Since color C is only able to move horizontally and its velocity is given, and also since point B also belongs to rod AB, which is doing rotation about a fixed axis at point A, therefore its velocity is perpendicular to this relative position vector. And now we have determined the direction of the linear velocities of both B and C, we draw lines that pass through point B and point C and are perpendicular to their linear velocities respectively, and the interception here is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. And this is the relative position of point C with respect to IC. Now, in this triangle, we can determine these three angles easily, and we know one side, and we want to find this side right here. According to law of science, we can solve this relative distance to be 0 0.773 meter, and remember the ratio between VC and RC relative to IC is omega, the angular velocity of rod BC, Therefore, from here, we can easily calculate omega to be 2.59 in the unit of radian per second, or simply the reciprocal of second, which is the same answer that we got in the previous video. And as you can see, since point C is moving to the right, which is clockwise about the instantaneous center, therefore, the direction of rotation is clockwise.